From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Hey guys, um, long time-ish listener, <laughs> first time caller. I just started listening to you guys again after I picked up my old slash new job again. And so I'm listening to podcasts more often and I've been listening to you guys. And there's something that I don't think you've covered this exact niche of something that's happened to me personally. Look, I, we all know that our phones listen to us and sometimes watch us with our cameras and whatnot but have you ever heard of someone being like i was just thinking about x product and then literally five minutes later they see ads for the specific product like on instagram or facebook that has happened to me a few years ago i was thinking about this small company called Mayday Designs, I believe, and they, they make notebooks and stationery and stuff. And it's a small company, it's all online. And I was just thinking while cleaning my room, oh, I should see if I need new notebooks because I think I'm almost filled. My phone was on the table in the kitchen downstairs and I was upstairs in my bedroom while I was thinking about that. And I realized my phone wasn't with me, so I went down to grab it and I'm like just scrolling through Instagram as usual and then bam. There is an ad for that specific company with the exact notebooks that I had. And I hadn't bought anything in a year and I haven't looked up on their Instagram account or anything like that. Like just thinking about that notebook and then all of a sudden I get that that ad. I don't know. It really freaked me out. And I've told other people about this like over the years, this exact story. And I've had people say, wow, that's weird. I was thinking about how I wanted to, for example, I don't remember the exact restaurant, but for example, they were like, I wanted to go to Arby's, but there really isn't Arby's around, or I just, I know I shouldn't eat out as much. And then the next thing that they knew, they're scrolling through Facebook, and there's an ad for Arby's. They didn't say anything out loud, they didn't look up on the internet, they were just thinking about it while in their car, on their drive home from work, and then bam, ad for Arby's. While they were just hanging out in the parking lot, before they decided to go home. So have any of you guys experienced that or know someone who has? Because it, it really freaks me out. <laughs> and um, I'd like to know what you guys think. Um, if I'm just connecting the dots because our brains are kind of like, you know, wired to do that, like making connections and stuff. But it, it happens not often enough for it to be a coincidence and yet it's happened to enough people that I feel like there's something else going on. And it freaks me out. Let me know what you guys think. Well, well, well. Yeah. This is a, this is one of those He's things that all the time. you'll always see think pieces on. They come out and say, uh, no, Facebook is not uh, monitoring you that way, the way you think. It's not listening to you, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll be honest with you. I don't buy it. At this point, because I, I know exactly what Anonymous is, has experienced. Has something like this happened with you guys? Dude, we were just talking about it recently. I think it was on this show about the Ridiculous History shirt, like with, with young Casey Pegram as a child. And you were on a call, I think, with uh, our, our, some other folks about the thing. <laughs> um, and I was not on this call. Um, but you told you told us after the fact that uh, it came up about this shirt. And then abracadabra, all of a sudden, you get served the ad not only for Ridiculous History shirts, but for that shirt. And um, all of this, I just think it's so obvious it bothers me that they just keep vehemently denying it because I just think it has to be true. It, it has yeah, to be true. Friends, family, we've we've I've seen it so many it, times. You know, that's why a lot of people use proxies, ad blockers, or just get off get off uh, Facebook altogether. Uh, Matt, back when you were a little more active on social media, did you see it ever run into stuff like this? I know we talked about it at length over the years. Uh, no, most of what I saw was an aggregate of things I had been searching for and things that were on my calendars, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like so upcoming events and things. Outlook, you know, it's sort of par for it's, it's fair game, I would say, if you've 
granted access to. Well, your... no, this was this was when it was all Google, right? Uh, several years back, everything was Google, and everything I did, and everywhere I went, everyone I communicated with was essentially Google, unless it was done, you know, for work. And I would just notice that stuff would get served to me when I was either on a social media, you know, app, or if I was just browsing and I was using Chrome. It just seemed like there was weird connections, but I couldn't prove any of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, Matt, you're, you're, you're referring to something that we do know to be a thing, you know, confirmed. I mean, Google, you know, uses keywords inside of your emails and in your calendar and stuff and then serves you those little ads in the margins, right? It's also building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it does that. And it's Google building. is a whole thing, right? <laughs> it's building predictive analytics. And this, this is where I think we go, we approach this from two fronts anonymous and everybody's experienced a weird algorithmic ad before the first front will will play skeptic we'll put on a skeptic's hat right and we'll use some of those arguments that have been made by uh, more skeptical folks writing those think pieces i mentioned and then secondly we'll uh <laughs> we'll we'll talk about something uh, plausible and a little more scary so first Something that's going to be familiar to the skeptics in the crowd. The idea of Bader-Meinhof phenomenon. You've heard a word for the first time. You've heard a word like um, Saturnine or something. And then you learn about that word and you have that the more you know vibe going on. And you think, oh, that's cool. Now I know a fancy way to say gloomy. And then later that week that day or whatever the interval of time is, you feel like everybody must have learned this word at the same time as you. Because you'll be damned if you haven't heard Saturnine more times this week than you have heard in the entirety of your life. You know what I mean? How often, but how much of that is an external factor and how much of that is uh, the magnificent and hugely imperfect human brain saying, I still think we're out in the wild, hunting, gathering, foraging, trying not to be eaten, so I am going to recognize patterns, right? And if anything comes up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obsessively, subconsciously build a pattern out of that. And that's what happens with, um, that's what happens with things like, let's say you're thinking you're going to buy a different car one day. Not to lean too much into the auto stuff, but you're thinking... I'm going to, you know, I think I might buy it. Uh, just name a car. What's a random car? Peugeot. Honda Odyssey. I'm going to buy a Peugeot Honda Odyssey. It's made by Honda and Peugeot. It is both infinitely annoying on the road and it's very small. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you were experiencing then is you're like, I want this hilarious Peugeot Honda Odyssey hybrid. And, uh, and then you start seeing them everywhere on the road and you start thinking wow these vehicles are really popular despite the fact that they're a terrible idea they're really really popular uh that may might that may make you more likely to buy one but what's happening instead again this phenomenon argues is that your brain is just prioritizing those and bringing them to your attention so you might be passing hundreds of honda civics which for a long time was the most common car in the u.s but you're not noticing those because that's not your vibe you want your weird micro car van or whatever and this this could be something to play here that's again that's a skeptical argument it could be that you just noticed an ad because you were already thinking of this thing however I I don't think that gets us to an explanation. I think there's. Oh, I, I reject with. that. I, I just I know what that is. I know what that feels like, and I think we all do. And I think we've all kind of learned to recognize that for the most part for what it is. But the thing with the and, and again, just to be clear, we're talking about verbal things that are said verbally, right? Just just to make sure we're, we're well. In this case, no. Our our caller is saying she thought about something that she wanted. Okay. And then it occurred. And then okay. saw it. But then I would argue, I, I'm not trying to, you know, impart um, intention on our on our caller, but I mean, I, I would argue that if you thought about something, chances are you searched for it ah, a little ah, no, bit. Ah. 
We're getting to my theory. Exactly. I, I want to stay in the you skeptical tip. Oh, this is. I think this might be adjacent. To my oh, is it really adjacent? Okay. Adjacent. Okay. It doesn't even have no, to no, be the exact perfect. thing. It's just a flavor of it. And then the algorithm's gotten so good that it extrapolates it to the thing you actually want. Oh, okay. So that. This is the second. That's front. that's the other. Yeah. I'm just going to give you this one, which is just my theory, and I think it's a little different from yours. I don't want to take wind out of your sails. Uh, uh, there's, I think we get served so many ads. So often, especially if we're on a social media feed, if you think about something like Instagram where you're just scrolling through, looking at posts, posts and posts and posts and posts, even if it's reels, it doesn't matter, anything like that, you are getting served ads generally one out of every three things that you look at. I think that's about a correct, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I think we are exposed to so many of those as we're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling that we don't even... They don't register in our even short-term memory. They just fling past us. But maybe enough of our subconscious or, you know, that part of us that just, again, that the part that needs us to stay alive and has done that since we've been evolving, um, a little piece of that grabs this, you know, maybe let's say 10% of that ad that flew past our eyes. Um, and if that's occurring... I, I do think that you could be served an ad. You're being served ads for certain things because of what the algorithm, algorithms think you want. And maybe our caller is somebody who has in the past purchased these, what was, what was it called? May Day Designs? Mm -hmm. something, May Days? May Day Designs? Mm -hmm. yep, something yep, yep, like yep. that has been in her past. She's, purchased, she's made a purchase before. They've been advertising to her because it's around the time that she should be buying some more. And she recently saw one and just doesn't even register that she saw an ad recently. Remind me the thing in her, in her, her message that made it so incredibly remarkable. Well, what's the detail that I'm kind of forgetting? Her her phone she so she just had a thought in the moment. Uh, her phone was physically away from her in another part of her domicile, uh, and she had not spoken to someone else around their phone about this. So typically, the the theory, the conspiracy theory, is that the phones are list the phones are listening right, uh, and then making ads based on conversation. I've tried some of that. It's got to be, there's got to be more to it than that, though, because I was trying to get ads for really, really expensive things. So I would literally, you know, sit with my phone and just whisper, like, I want to buy a yacht or a trips to Monaco and just, you know, the, the most obnoxiously wealthy stuff I could imagine, like uh, get young blood, stuff like that. Shout out to our blood episode on modern vampires but there there is some sand to this because you're not there's no no sales to take the wind out of here except maybe this theory uh, uh and from facebook's part uh what what most people don't know and what i would say most people can't access uh would be the level of the level of information that exists about your habits you know the depth of the persona that has been built around you. Matt, you said something really interesting with the idea of a time interval. Is it time for Anonymous to buy the, you know, to, to buy from this company again, right? Or is it uh, time for us to enter in a new, a new pitch, right? Like we've got travel records, either through third party purchases like airline tickets, right? Maybe records of uh, gas purchases that, that you've made in a, in a road trip or something like that. And then maybe you have established a pattern that you drive up to Kalamazoo or whatever every, every year around Christmas time. You might get ads for that because you are becoming there. Your patterns are becoming predictable. And this is not, this is not illegal. This is not saying that Facebook is evil because of that. They're buying this from third-party brokers. A lot of the TOS, terms of service people sign, explicitly allow for that secondary stream of income to fork.